Street. We are broadcasting live tonight from Washington, D.C. I'm your host, Cassandra Archer, a.k.a. the Divine Diva of Comedy. Thank you for tuning in tonight. We have a great show. You better tune in to this best on radio. See, this is a wonderful thing, man. When I open these two eyes, the world has not been kind to me. It's not pleasing to me. The world no longer appeals to me. Tune in every Tuesday right here at Vessel Radio. 7 o'clock. Don't be late, you know. The majority of the males in my family are in jail to this day. Wow. And it's Brother Shazan and Preston. My God. Man, you can't tell me say you're not good people. It says, hello, my name is D. My mother's currently in the hospital at this present time in ICU due to a blood clot in her heart. For five straight weeks, I went to five straight funerals. Um, wow. I just lost a child. I just received news today that I may not be able to carry a pregnancy to full term. Tune into Vessel Radio every Tuesday. Eh? You hear me I'm saying? Radio. I might be back, but y'all gonna stop waking me up. I'm going back to sleep. I'm out of here. See you next week. See y'all gone. Bye bye. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Day night. Who's going out tonight? I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. Stay on time. Alright. Love you. My time zone when my mind's gone and I'm flying home and I'm stressed out and I'm tempted to get that style phone and go pull it up but you know what's up and you know that ain't gonna solve nothing I mean Lord forbid I might fall or something and I'm all another cuz to hold me down like bitch strapped to the sight ward it's killing me but you still with me when I fight hard and you 
begging me when I'm eating you. Deal with me when my car's pulled. Could have dealt with me, but you fell for me for I fell for you. Keep me on that right path and the right math. Is you plus nothing's everything. You my everything, same. You ain't got to question my allegiance. Cause the way you love me, I could never leave. I need you. By my side. Did I fall in this? No condition that get a mention, but you offer this. Unconditional love, I swear I sell it all for this. Trying to keep it together, forget my awkwardness. But I'm um, off to this, just you and me off in this. Valley of shadows, and I know they trying to pick me off in this. But all I need is you. It's funny just how off I get when I ain't riding with you. No adjectives for your awesomeness. Um, they burning one for that burnout. This life ain't got them all turned out. Took time out to put time in, so I turn to you when I want out. need is you. You slow me down, cause you know me now. But my phony smile, and I'm acting like it's all copacetic. It's so pathetic, so do know what you do. You keep me cool in the summer when they be dressing less and I be wanting to show off a stunt. But there ain't nothing to want. You give me all that I need. All I need is you to keep that fire burning for me. All I need is you. By my side. How y'all doing tonight? And welcome to the Vessel Radio Show. I pray everybody's had a wonderful week, wonderful day. And uh, we have a wonderful, wonderful show lined up for you tonight. We got my man Norm, the professor tonight. Also, Christian hip-hop artist Mark Collins is also here tonight. And then we'll start it out like we always do with the word of the day. And the word of the day is Psalms 8, 3 through 9. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers the moon and the stars, which you have ordained. What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made a little lower than angels and you have crowned him glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all of the earth. Amen. Amen. Give it up for Jesus. All right. How y'all doing? <laughs> welcome and welcome to Vessel Radio. I'm your host, Cassandra Archer. Thank you so much, the apostle in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Um, make sure you call us and let us know how you like tonight's show at 276-318-3773. That's 276-D1-Vessel, all right, at Vessel Radio on Instagram and Twitter. We have a wonderful show tonight. I'm just excited. How was your weekend? Man, it was wonderful, man. I had an opportunity to go out and uh, speak to the youth, a couple youth football teams this weekend. It, they blessed me. Wow. You know, God is really working out there. Awesome. We want to give a quick shout out to our producer who's not in the building tonight. Shout out to Shazan, DJ Shake. What up, Shake? Yes, yes. Be safe out there. The roads are getting kind of crazy, crazy, crazy. But um, I'm looking forward to uh, this show tonight. I, I know these two gentlemen, they are wonderful. First up is um, Mr. Mark Collins. And I actually met him within this last year. You know, just seeing someone perform and then meeting them on, at a different level, 
it's amazing the transformation. Just like when I met you, your performance speaks nothing for the person that you um tell you. You just transform into a whole different person. And I guess it's just basically with your walk with God and and so forth. Um, I understand that Mark um it was actually born in Germany. Do we have a picture of Mark? We want to see how he looks. Um, Eric, if you can help us so that I can show the viewers this young man, handsome guy too. Mark Collins was born in Frankfurt, Germany, and basically raised out here in PG County. And for as long as he can remember, he's always loved um, music. And it shows through his life. I mean, he is a, a great musician. And growing up, he went through different things in the DMV, you know, played in go-go bands as a teenager and so forth. And he once realized that he wanted this music to take him to other places and he fell in love with hip-hop trying to bring a positive into a negative situation after coming and accepting christ mark stepped away from his music to get rooted into god's word and he had to follow what god was leading him to do mark began his gift in glorifying god through various events in the area he released a project, R.A.P., Righteous, Anointed, Powerful Music. That happened in 2005, and I just got to find out what's happening with him today. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the studio Mr. Mark Collins. What's good, people? Come on over here. You scared of me? No, Come on over here. No, I'm good. I'm good. What's up, good people? I'm here. No, thank y'all for having me, though. Seriously, thank y'all for having me. I appreciate it. We, we Shout out to God's elect. God's you know I mean? elect, that's yeah. right. Yeah, before we go any further, I got I to gotta salute God's elect because he has, a few years ago, he dropped one of the all-time classic records of all. Now, I'm not just talking about Christian hip-hop. Okay. I'm talking about classic hip-hop joints, the making of you, one of my favorite joints of all time. So salute God's elect and my homie right here, the apostle. And you too. <laughs> the apostle. Yeah, the, the apostle. apostle. <laughs> thank y'all for having me. I appreciate it. I'm just, I'm excited to have you here. You know how we met. It was at a different event. Yeah. And when I saw you, I was just like, whoa, we connected. You yeah. know, just the same way I was telling Apostle when I met him, it was just like, okay, this guy's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I love your music. Appreciate it. Um, but we got to rewind a little bit. Yeah. Born in Germany? Really? Frankfurt, yeah, Frankfurt, Frankfurt and Maine, Germany, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So do you remember any of Germany? Were not, you just not born a, there? Yeah, just born there. Not a thing. Don't remember one iota. Don't speak German. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. So these go-go bands, yeah. and um, how did that come about, and how long did you do that? Man, I did that, uh, you know, I did that all through, basically all through high school. You know, shout out to Regency. You know, that was a little Regency. band that was in, yeah, we, yeah. Regency, <laughs> Regency band. Yeah, we used to crank, though. Don't get it twisted. We used to yeah, rock. they did. Yeah, I didn't used to, know that. You ain't know it was it? Yeah, man, we used to crank, man. What did you do, though? Frontline stuff, you know, frontline stuff. Yeah, I don't play a single instrument. <laughs> frontline stuff. <laughs> yeah. Your so voice was, is your instrument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah, so that was the, yeah, that was my first love, go, go. But I'm originally from Baltimore. So when I came here from Baltimore to PG County and they, you know, I heard the go, go stuff, I was like, okay, well, where are they going and when is the music going to stop? I didn't understand uh, the whole, you know, I didn't. They just go on well, So what you making that, what you making that thing for? Uh, uh, I'm just <laughs> telling you what I was thinking, man. You know, but after a while, man, I had, you know, I had that, that, man. And next thing you know, I said, man, you know what? I want to do that. And you so, fell in love with that. Fell in love with it, man. Hey, yeah, Chuck yeah. Brown. Yeah. So hey, I'm a PG right category. here on Georgia Avenue. <laughs> right yeah, down man. the street at uh, Black Hole. That's what they used to mm -hmm. call it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, got in so trouble a few times. I play, I play, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what it is, man. So, I, you know, did that all through high school. You know, had a love for the. For the go go music, man, did that and um, you know, somehow transitioned into hip hop. But I always loved wow. hip hop. Always, you know, had a love but far as like being an artist, never even thought about it. So just so you're a Christian hip hop artist. Yeah, I'm a Christian hip hop. Okay. okay. Yeah, I mean I I did my, you know, sec I think like most folks started out secular. Yes. And um, you know, but God came and snatched me up before my little secular career even started. Amen. So. Amen. Before we get to, uh, was you Mark Collins in the secular world too? Nah, man, I was, you know who I was, man? I was, uh, y'all ready for this? Uh oh. I was Joe Crucial. I was the what? hardest, yeah, the hardest <laughs> dude out there. The hardest dude out there. But yeah, the only thing son. is, I was, yeah, I was from, you know, PG County. And so it, it wasn't, you know, well, at least I'm saying, I'm not saying it wasn't thugs in PG. I'm just saying I wasn't one of them, you know, okay. but I was portraying that I was. Okay, you know? all right, What's Joe saying? Crucial. Yeah. How about this? Joe Crucial. <laughs> At that time. Uh -huh. Or even right now, who is your top 
five hip hop artists of all time, and it's Joe Crucial, one of them. <laughs> Oh gosh! Oh gosh! <laughs> nah, man, Joe, Joe Crucial, he's he, he's gone, man. He's dead. Okay. But you know, you know, back in the day, man. You know, I'm, I got a little age on me, so you know, I mean, all time hip hop favorite of all time, definitely Red Man. Back, you know, that's that was my influence. Okay. That whole okay. that whole squad, okay. EPMD, you know, Dos FX, that whole squad, Keith Murray. That was that was you know that was my squad. Awesome. Did you that's bring your five? Buses? That's your mm-hmm. five. I mean, that's just was. Nah, I mean, I ain't really got. I mean, that's my. That was my squad, well, who man. Who you were expecting you know, him to yeah. say? Oh, man. But right now, as far as I mean, <laughs> I don't know, man. I never even really, really even thought about it. You know, I mean, that's just my back in the day. That was my squad, man. You know, give him a break. He's from Baltimore. Yeah. No, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. listen. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I'm ready. I'm ready for. I'm PG County. I'm a PG County <laughs> boy. I've been to PG County forever. Okay. Check this out. Okay. Anybody, anybody that put Redman in their count is never a problem because Reggie Noble was one of the yeah, he was most fierce what? MCs yeah, ever. Oh, so no. I have no problem Reggie with that. Yeah. None. Yeah. So that whole squad, that just was, you know, they just the best. EPMD was the best. Group of all time to me, and that's just see. Weird. See, that's where you go left, man. I, you know, see, that's I'll, where you go left. Don't don't do don't say that no more. I, I said it was you know back when I was <laughs> in that type. You know, that, that was my squad, man. Okay, but just know. tell us, did you bring anything for us to listen to? Yeah, I man. To yeah, share man. This yeah, with yeah, everyone. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's. Uh, okay, so what are we going to hear? Um, let's get into it. Uh, this is uh it's coming from the uh, Ministry Minded Project, the Long Awaited Project. It'll be out summer 2015. Um, I hooked up with some incredible artists, artists that I, uh, you know, connected with over the last few years, really respect and look up to. And so uh, this track is called Jesus Stuff, and it got my homegirl, Miss Miss Trina, on it. Okay, Uh-oh. okay. Yeah, Miss Trina, yeah. Okay, okay. shout yeah, out to Miss Trina. the homegirl. So I said, I got to get on the record, man. <laughs> and the thing about this record is that she, uh, but I just, y'all just go ahead. We got to check, check it out. Let's check it out. Uh-huh. Let's get it in. Mark Collins, <laughs> Miss Trina, Trina, Jesus stuff. Yeah. You know, before the Lord saved us, we was on a whole lot of stuff. Lying and stuff, cheating and stuff. Now we on that Jesus stuff. Yeah. I'm about that Jesus stuff, not that, not that other stuff. Not that smoking, drinking, cutting up and hanging at the club. No, I don't make it rain, but my car rain. My whole life changed since Christ came. Ain't tripping on money, ain't tripping on fame. It could all disappear, poof, David Blaine. That's right, I rap the king and I'm unashamed. Like Greg and I'm a blessed name in the morning and the evening all day, man. Undignified praise, no, I will not stop her. Catch me at the brook, some like I'm sure Baraka. I do this for my daddy, better at my papa. papa. What the devil, I for best believe me, I want not a. Uh-uh. And I don't pop pills, no. I don't pop bottles. No. Got white be at home, yeah. don't need no urban model. Uh-huh. They saying, hell yeah, I'm saying, hell no. It's that Jesus stuff, yeah, that's what I'm on. I'm on that Jesus stuff, not that, not that other stuff. Hey. I'm on that Jesus stuff, not that, not that other stuff. No. I'm with that Jesus stuff. Yes, sir. It's another one. Another one. Uh, we just came to let them know, man. 
that's all we can't do. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're talking about. Sin played out, man. I know, man, it's dead. Living right, that's the new thing, man. That's what it is. It's the millennial, man. Ministry, man. Hey, hey, Ma. What I trend? It's enough. I'm going to rock again, bro. That was hot stuff, baby. That was hot, man. That was hot. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, Miss Trina did her thing, man. All Bars. Right. That's something to legalize right there, yeah. that Jesus stuff. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you about Miss Trina verse, too. She actually, I hit up for the, you know, we were trying to do a record for a little minute. Hit up, um, asked her to do the record, went to the studio. And uh, she actually, I think she misplaced her original verse. She wow. lost her. So that's the, that's the, main, I don't know what the first verse was. That just came that off was of the, her head like man. that? I don't what? know. I mean, that was the second verse. So I don't and know listen, what the, so. I don't know about the original out to verse. Miss Trina. But that was the verse she was supposed to do. Yeah, but yeah, that no, was no hot. Doubt. No girl, doubt, baby. Girl, you girl, ripped girl, that. Man. You ripped yeah, that, Miss Trina. People, shout out man. to Miss Trina. That's right. Shout out no to Miss Trina repping the ladies. Hey. <laughs> I got a question though. Uh-huh. Outside, outside of you, you told us your uh, your secular influences. Okay. But since you've been to Christian hip hop, or when you decided you was gonna do Christian hip hop, name some people that kind of influenced you. Okay. Because I'm I'm just gonna be I'm just gonna be bad enough to admit this. When I first decided that. I was gonna, you know, give my life to Christ. The first, like, I, I mean, of course, we we all heard of cross music right. and all that, but the first Christian hip hop I physically saw was you. Wow! You know, uh, I wow. was there at your at your album release party, That's and the first person I saw was That's you. It was you, Willie Blunt. Yeah. You know, my cousin Carlos yep. and all that, and okay. and that that was the night that I said, you know what, I could do this. That's what's up, so man. I mean, I owe you that. Oh, wow. Wow, man. I would have thought, man. oh wow. I mean, you guys, that's amazing. And you yeah. saw him first. Yeah. Oh, so, you know, Lowe's, he told, I thought, yeah, he, he told me that before, man. So, you know, that's, that's definitely humbling. So, I had the same type of uh, experience, man. So, for me, it was uh, it was King Solomon. Oh, right? wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. it was King good. Solomon. So, so King you know, Solomon. I was kind of going through my transition. This is around uh, 2000, 2001, and uh, I'm struggling, you know, kind of the same thing. Do I want to stay with the secular piece? You know, I'm, I'm I'm going to church. I'm getting the word, um, but I'm you know I'm torn. You know what I mean? And I'm like I'm kind of him and Han, and we saw him at uh, I think it was Ebenezer, King mm. Solomon at Ebenezer, and ripped it. Ripped. I mean, it was it was some other some major you know gospel recording artists, and then he I mean he ripped it. And I said, you know what? Same thing. I can do this, man. And so that was in uh, 2004. Wow. Uh, yeah, that was 2000. It's, it's been a little minute, man. It's been a little minute. So man, it's been. You know, it's been on, been challenges and everything ever since. But man, God is faithful, man. So yeah, that was it for me. So it was so shout out to King Solomon, man. Shout out, he don't know that, but shout out to King Solomon, man. He was the one that you know. That I said, man, you know what? I can do this, man. What are you? What is it? Your message that you want to send to everyone when through your music, man. Just G, like you heard it, Jesus stuff, man. G, okay. that's what I'm on. You know what I mean? Jesus is he's alive. He's He's just awesome, man. He's just, you know, just want to, you know, give hope, man. Jesus, that's the bottom line, man. You know, I know it's a lot of, you know, within the, and the apostle can probably, uh, can probably attest to this, you know, it's a lot of some controversy of, my, you know, you, are you a Christian rapper or a rapper that's Christian, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, you know, my, my, it's just <laughs> Jesus, man. That's it. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus is, you know, he's the answer, man. And so, you know, real simple message, just Jesus, man. That's it. You are deep. You, know? you are, you are, <laughs> you are deep, brother. Please tell everyone how they can contact you or how they can get your music. All right. Well, um, with Facebook, Mark Collins, uh, Twitter, Collins underscore MR. And Instagram is Mark to the Collins. That's M A R K, the number two, T H E C O L L I N S. So music is forthcoming. Website is forthcoming. Um, so it's gonna be a crazy project. Got this guy on here, the Apostle <laughs> Man. I don't know if we, you know, got that joint tonight, but uh, we, you know, so I'm, I'm excited about it, man. It's been a long time coming. I'm looking to drop it May, June, somewhere around there. So we put the finishing touches on it. Uh, getting the mixing and, and, and working on the mastering, man. So I'm excited about it. Ministry Minded, y'all better, I'm telling you, it's going to be a crazy project. And what's the name of that project? Ministry Minded. Ministry Minded. Ministry yes. Minded, that, yeah. And that, what we heard, is on that also. That's going to be on that project. Jesus yeah. stuff. Jesus stuff, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, man, yeah. What's what's to come? I mean, we want to we want to know everything about Mark Collins, okay? We want to know where you're going, and we want to make sure we follow you through this whole thing, okay? Man, but we want to hold it up. Okay. Hold up for one right. quick second. We're going to take a quick commercial break at Vessel Radio on Instagram and Twitter. We're going to take a quick commercial, and we'll be right back because we want to know everything about Mr. Mark Collins. All right? Yep. Hit us up. Yeah, I call him with some questions, man. <laughs>
Amen. Thank you so much for sending that information. We are here with the Apostle and our guest, Mark Collins. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Awesome. So we're hearing some great things about what he's doing. We want to know what's in the future. What are you looking forward to doing and working on? Man, just continuing to, um, you know, hit up the DMV, whoever will have me, youth groups, uh, festivals, you know, malls, whatever. Um, we got a, a joint in April, as a matter of fact. We going up to Philly. Okay. Uh, with, a, with a bunch of, matter of fact, Miss Trina. Uh, I think nonfiction is on that bill. Uh, Vinnie Lane. So we're going up. It's called the uh, the City Love Concert, April 11, 8 p.m. So viewers, listeners, if you're up in Philly, come check us out April the 11th. So that's the next, uh, you know, big joint coming. Got videos uh, we're working on. Got a video coming out with uh, a thesis and nonfiction, Go to War. We're supposed to be shooting that. Uh, next Sunday, man. So I'm excited wow, about what God is doing. Yeah, man. Awesome. What God awesome. Is doing this season. You guys gotta let Mark know what you think about him. Hit us up at D1 Vessel at 276-318-3773. That's D1 Vessel Radio. Hit us up. Let us know how you feel. What's going on? If you like his music, if you don't, let him know. <laughs> no, I'm sure they nah, love. It's all good. They love it. Love it's it. All good. I just heard you. We just saw an ad about domestic violence, and you yeah. said something about your. You you have an organization or what? Well, I, well, not an organization, but my nine to five. That's what I do. I'm a domestic violence violence counselor. So wow. I, yeah, so I facilitate wow. anger management and domestic violence group here in here okay. DC. Yeah. Wow, so right here in DC. Right here in DC. Awesome. Yeah. That is so yeah. wonderful. The things you find out about people, yes, right? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> wonderful. Well, we have another guest joining us tonight. This young man, we we have all worked with. Looking forward to working with him more. Um, I think we have his. I think we have his photo. Um, he is from the World uh, World Life Cafe. This young man is known as the Professor, and when he is performing his spoken word, his poetry, his ministry, he's a father. He's a veteran who served in the Navy. I did not know that, right? <laughs> Performed in the Navy during the Desert Storm. Awesome. He performed. He was um, part of the nuclear engineering field. And that's a group that's called the Nukes. And we that's awesome for somebody that we know, you know, he's so young also. Anyway, the professor, okay, continues doing his work for the Lord. And he is part, he has a part uh, in everything that begins, first begins with the Bible study, bringing people to understanding Christ and going into deeper studies with them. I have had the wonderful, wonderful privilege of performing on several of his events. He is an awesome man of God, a minister, and a great believer. Let's please welcome to our platform the professor, Mr. Norman Brown. All right, all right. Sorry about that, Norman. Come on over, come on over, get close. Pastor took a shower. Pastor took a shower. We were trying to get your photo up, but we'll get it back. You were on our flyer. Yeah. We are happy to have you here. Glad to be here. Awesome, awesome. And you know Mark Collins? Of course, of, of course. Of course, of course. Okay, I'm sure you guys are going to collaborate yeah, and stuff like that. Do. Right, that's your dude? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what is going on with you, Professor? Oh, man, there's so many things to say. Um, first of all, I just want to give a shout-out to uh, God's elect and the apostle, and then also to you, you know. <laughs> Um, it was like 2010, the last time you came and performed. Oh, you going to call life. me out 2010? Uh, <laughs> it was that long ago. <laughs> it has been well, a while. Well, that's for all of us, so you know. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, I just, um, I'm just doing a lot of things these days. Uh, one of the things I'm trying to do is get back into the studio because I want to actually come out with my own mm. um, project. I haven't come out with a project since... I don't even remember. Wow. It was a long wow. time ago. But um, I'm, I've been working on some new pieces and, you know, just getting ready to get back into the studio so I can come out with a nice, fresh album. Um, I have a couple of compilations that I'm going to be on coming up soon. Okay. Um, okay. And as you know, I wrote a book. I, I heard <clears> about <throat> the book. I'm like, where did the book come from? Yeah, this I wrote wonderful. a book about a year ago. So, I mean, well, I released it a year ago. I actually wrote that book starting in 2003, and God had me rewrite the book in 2007. What is And then it? I sat on it for like five, well, more than five years, actually. But um, 
Anyway, what inspired it? Well, basically, it came out of a, um, a real life situation. You know, I actually used to attend a church that, um, you know, I was really uh, involved in ministry there. Mm-hmm. And um, it was like right after I came out of the military. Okay. So okay. I went straight to that church pretty much out of the military. Okay. And, um, you know, after that, that time in my life, you know, I was not really uh, spiritually. Yeah. In tune. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so there were some things that happened that um, I didn't even realize would happen. And, um, you know, I got into a situation where I experienced what it was like to sit under the teaching of a false prophet. Oh, and, and that, that helps with the title, okay, which is <laughs> Among the Wolves. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> wow. That was the title of the book? Oh, yeah. Among the, title the, book. the Wolves. Yes. yes. Okay. So the thing about it is, you know, wow. one thing that you know about people that God uses for a certain work, they typically have to go through a situation that's relating to what they're going to minister to people about. Whatever it is that they came out of is what's going to be their, what their anointing is going to be for. Hmm. You know, Moses, he came out of Egypt, but he went back to free his people. Wow. You know? That's just one example of many that I could present. But the point is, is that, you know, when you're talking about um, someone who writes about something authoritatively, you had to have experienced it. And Ooh. believe me, I experienced it on one of the deepest levels that you can experience it. Wow. And um, there was a point in time where I was very bitter about that, you know. And um, it took going to a, uh, a leadership conference where the man of God literally said, um, tonight it's time for you to pray for Saul. Mm-hmm. And and when you understand the story about David and Saul, David was running for his life from Saul. Saul wanted to murder David. And wow. that particular night when he, you know, when this man told everyone to pray for their Saul, yeah. that was the hardest prayer I ever prayed in my life because I literally had to get rid of whatever kind of bitterness or anything else that I had in my heart towards that man mm. in order to pray for him. Mm, mm, mm. And wow. it that was one of the most um, difficult experiences I've had in my life. That, that seems uh, difficult. Yeah. So, but out of that came, you know, um, healing, restoration. Yeah. Shortly after that is when God really, like, he gave me a fuller understanding of what my call was because, you know, um, the Lord had spoken to me in 95 and told me what my call was, but he Mm. gave it to me kind of like in a code a little bit. Okay. And then it wasn't (laughs) until almost 10 years later that he gave it to me in a a fuller fashion where I understood more of what he was really trying to tell me. And so so since then, you know, like I said, God has just been um, just – I guess you could say deepening my my understanding of the word and yeah. you know causing yeah. me to just um, experience certain things, whether it be through secular experiences like with jobs and stuff like that, right. and also in the church, and allowed me to see, <clears throat> excuse me, various aspects of of business and things of that nature that's going to help me in the ministry that God has called me to. I am just blown away. I, you know, you you meet someone and you really really don't realize, you know, how what they've been through. And I'm just amazed just from working with you and not knowing that you, you wow. <laughs> you have wowed me. Did you, hopefully you brought something um, uh, with you so that we can sample. Um, but everybody out there, this is the professor, Norman Brown. He's joining us. He's talking about his book, Amongst the Wolves. Um, we have so much to learn and so much to um, find out uh, about what's going on and what's coming up in the future. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Hey, yo, this is Norm the Professor. This is the Word on the Streets mixtape. Many are called, but few are chosen. Loyalty is hard to come by in these streets that are broken. So I find it hard to believe that among those that believe, I got to keep an eye out for what's under their sleeves. Forked tongue, full of dung, the same ones for whom Christ hung. Backstabbers, attention grabbers who sell you out for dough. It's hard finding a real brother, so I got to take it slow. 
A friend is for adversity, even if the worst of me. Faithful are the wounds of a friend to the end, so let's pretend you were on the block, ducking cops more like 4.0s off the clock. And you had a gat in your back with Kyle was packing Max. Let's say you got caught, locked down for a minute while these cats were snitching to cop a plea like they wasn't in it. How would it make you feel knowing you were betrayed? by disloyal crabs leaving you in a bad light portrayed. Instead of them, I'm taking dirt naps for the cause, dying to self daily, them dudes is lost. Can y'all feel this or am I alone in this? Judas was called friend, yet he betrayed with a kiss. What did I miss? To my brothers on lockdown, you know what it is. The streets don't tolerate this loyalty, kid. I need friends who stick closer than a brother. I'm not looking for down low undercovers, no homo. I shouldn't even have to say it. The way that the world is, I really can't belay it. But this is real talk on a real walk filled with snakes and snitches who want to rise from rags to riches at the expense of me. But they hand on my neck and me down on my knees. So I embrace you while I embrace my destination as you accelerate the process like cotton gins on plantations. I'm expressing that I need you like bees need pollen. This death is unto resurrection and there's no need to be solemn. I'm giving pounds to my enemies, praying for those that curse. The best thing I can do for them is actually worse. I'll bless them instead. No need for revenge. God's got my back and my testimony will impinge upon the enemy's plans for division in the midst of the strife he caused. An attempt to abort my purpose or at a minimum put my life on pause. So I lift up a standard with the Holy Spirit in the middle, while hearts heal from wounds made like clay mixed with spittle. There's resurrection for those contemplating suicide over mishaps and missteps with my repentant brothers, I'll ride. No more disloyalty in the body of Christ. Let's not tolerate this wicked and evil device. Satan only comes to destroy, kill, and steal. But I'm looking for brothers who keep it real. So never reveal the secrets that I share with people for whom I don't care unless I must change from being open to beware. I'm combating that spirit so strongly rooted in disloyalty because I must constantly fight against the Judas in me. So awesome. that was Professor Norman Brown. Oh, you're supposed to snap. <laughs> From Word, W-O-R-D, Word Life Cafe. That was awesome. That's the Norman I remember. Yes. That's <laughs> awesome, wonderful. Um, we are here, our producer, our um, founder of the show, Preston, is here with us tonight. Preston, God's who, elect. And that's right, God's elect. Somebody's hitting us up on Twitter and Instagram. We want to find out who's tuning listen, in. Listen, listen, the lines is blowing up tonight, y'all. <laughs> we got Norman the Professor in the building. We got a, a, Apostle. We got the Diva of Comedy. <laughs> Uh, Cassandra Archer. We also got Mark Collins. We got DMV B Moors in the house. Yeah, yeah. Listen, listen, listen. Rock the Goddess just tweeted. She said, Wow, Norm is schooling life right now. Love it. Wow, I'm going to cop the book. While we have you right here, Norm, tell us a little bit more about the pain, the deliverance, the process, uh, the church that you were in. How long were you in that church uh, going through that whole turmoil, that suffering? I was actually there for seven years. And um, it's kind of ironic that it was seven years. Mm, I think completion. that, um, you know, you look at things that God has done in the scriptures and it's always some significant amount of time. And I believe that was a specific amount of time for me to be there. Um, but what I would say about that situation is that um, there was a lot of things that I saw with my own eyes. I didn't read about it. I saw it. Mm. I saw false prophets, how they operate. I've seen them in action, how they lie, how they twist the word and things like that. But um, the process that I went through after that, it was first started, it first started with bitterness. And the bitterness came out of the fact that I was so close to who it was that tricked me, deceived mm. me, manipulated yeah. me, that when God showed me that it was time to leave, that it was very painful. And it was hard for me to accept it. It was hard for me to receive that. And so the time over the next few years, it was a lot of recovery. Mm -hmm. You know, I was recovering from that. And then having to learn how to trust leaders again. Mm -hmm. yes. Because that was a deep hurt. Wow. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so um, we're not just talking about somebody who you say, well, that's my pastor. No, right. we're talking about somebody who I call my friend, yeah. my pastor, yeah. my spiritual mm. father, right, right. all these kinds of things. So, that's hard. That's real hard. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Wow. Uh, someone just texted and they said, uh, this question is for Norman. What are some signs of a false prophet? Oh, well, let me tell you one of the biggest signs. First of all, when they twist the word. Mm -hmm. Anybody who takes the word and they take it out of context, they mm -hmm. twist what it says to mean something else that it right. doesn't even say. Yeah. Um, that's a, the that's a biggest sign. One of the things that I uh, taught in my Bible study that I have is that you have to have at least two or three witnesses for everything that you teach is doctrine. Yeah. You cannot say, well, Jesus wept. That means, you know, Jesus was a punk. You know, no, you can't do that. Right. That's not that's not sound doctrine yes. at all and that's the only time that you see that jesus even went through that type of situation so the point is is that you have to have two or three witnesses for anything you establish as doctrine another thing is you'll see them try to get your money they'll be mm. after your money Woo, they'll have all man. kinds of things that they say <laughs> to try to get your money they'll try to manipulate you out of your money oh they claim that they're prophesying but they're lying they claim like that lying. they are telling you certain things that, that you have to do or else, mm -hmm. you know, so they'll, it'll scare you into giving your money. And so they're after your money. They're after your soul because even in the book of Revelation, you find that it says, out of the mouth of the false prophet came a spirit like a frog, mm. an unclean spirit. Wow. And it came out of their mouth. Mm. So when you like look that. at false prophets, out of their mouth comes unclean spirits like a frog. And you're still doing your Bible study now. Where, where can where is it located? Well, it's actually it's two uh, <laughs> it's in two ways to look <laughs> at it. It's one okay. it's, it's online. I mean, it's on the phone. We okay. have a conference call okay. number. Um, and call? to be honest, I don't know it off the top of my head. I had to look on my phone that, real quick. And, and we want to make sure you give us concerned, that. Um, you know, we're going to have it every Monday, okay. uh, 7 p.m. It's going to be uh, the conference call. Okay. But we also have um, a meetup that we do. Uh, you can find us on meetup.com uh, forward okay. slash the Oasis Bible we're Study. We're going to make sure we get that like information. That. I can't remember exactly. We, we're going to get it and URL, put it out through Vessel <clears throat> Communication because I want to be able to be a part of that. I was actually in a church that... Um, the pastor was the same way, um, misleading us and um, money, whoo, money hungry. And then um, there was just so many wrong things. And one day I was, he was preaching, and I looked up. I said, he want us to praise him. Mm -hmm. he, he was getting us to, you oh, know, yeah. worship mm -hmm. him. And it's really sad because a lot of people fell off and they stopped going to church because of that. Church is bogus. Church is, you know, mm -hmm. misleading. That's why I don't go to church now. People be lying. But, I mean, he's a human being. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody need to help him. But um, I'm so glad that, you know, sometimes you have to be strong. And if mm -hmm. I wasn't strong, if you weren't strong, mm -hmm. you know, we would have been led astray mm -hmm. and just turned our backs on Christ well, all, all together. The ironic thing about that, and before I move on, I'm going to tell you the number. Okay. It's 530-881-1400, and the PIN number is 727-114. Again, that number is 530-881-1400, PIN number 727-114. Um, I just wanted to say that, you know, the thing about it, what I realized out of that situation is that it wasn't necessarily about my strength as much as it was about my relationship with God. Mm, mm. If I didn't have a true desire to have a relationship with God, that's what would have caused me to turn my back on God. Mm -hmm. See, what I learned out of that situation is though I could be bitter yeah. and be angry at God for some time, he knew my heart. And he knew that out of that situation, there was going to come great revelation. Right. He right. knew that his son Jesus was going to die, but mm -hmm. he needed to send him here. Wow. You see what I'm saying? So any situation that you find yourself in, no matter what it is, you're there for a reason because once you come out, you're going to be the one that's going to resurrect and say, this is what it is. And God has given me here. all power in my hands Hallelujah. out of that situation. Amen. You know? Amen. I mean, I, I know that I can feel your energy right now. I can, <laughs> and, I, and I know you guys are going to collaborate. Where would you be right now today if Christ was not centered in your life? Lost man, I mean Lost. you know yeah he's uh, he's man God is awesome he, he you know brought me up 
you know, I mean, I was in a, a, a very dark, uh, at my lowest point, man. And, um, I mean, he's my everything. I mean, he's giving me a, a, a awesome, beautiful wife. Shout out my wife, Tia Collins. <laughs> the Reverend hey, Tia, Tia Collins, my baby. <laughs> um, so, man, he's just opened so many doors for me uh, professionally. Uh, I'd be lost, man. I'd be, you know, still out there, you know, searching, running, um, seeking, you know, still if, empty. If you saw Dro- Joe <laughs> Crucial walking down the street today, what would you, say, what would you I, tell Joe Crucial? I say, Joe, stop, stop faking, man. <laughs> I say, Joe, stop, you ain't hard, man. Stop faking. That's what I tell him. Come <laughs> to Jesus, man. <laughs> Professor, coming from uh, Desert Storm. Thank you for your service. First of all, I was like, whoa, I didn't even know. I got a question about uh, that. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. When she said his... Uh, uh, the, comp- the organization was called the Nukes. No, no, no. Oh. I, the Nuke is not an organization. That is actually a physical part of the Navy. Okay. I see this man and I ain't even been funny. Nuke does not come to my mind. <laughs> how, does, how, does, how does a nuke even come anywhere near poetry or hip hop? Because, what? because hey. listen, I was in the Navy. I was wow, in the Navy. Good. I know what nuke. I know what a nuke is. And nuke are the are like they're the brainiacs. He's the, a brainiac. I'm not saying he's not. I mean, I'm not saying <laughs> Did it. Did you but, just hear that? I mean, but when you when you see a nuke, to go to a commercial. Listen, you think of a nerd. Listen, you oh, think you, think, it, of a you nerd. think it's Coke bottle glasses. <laughs> <laughs> you thinking patent leather shoes, Steve Urkel. You know what I'm saying? Well, he the new he the new age nuke. That's what he's. He the 2015 nuke. I, I mean, I know somewhere, uh, somewhere in this world of cyberspace is a bunch of nukes like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know. Yeah, well, I got to I gotta tell you, man, um, my whole life, you know, I went through uh, rejection. Mm. I'm going to tell you straight up. Mm-hmm. I went through rejection. I started to really notice it when I was like in the sixth grade when... I was answering all these questions in class and then kids were hating on me. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, after a while, I started trying to hide my intelligence. Mm. Wow. And just kind of like, you know, shrink back, let other people ask, answer the questions. But then God, you know, I guess he gave my mother wisdom to say, you need to get in honors and advanced placement classes. Yeah. That, that way you'll be with people like you. Yeah. So I got into those kind of classes and then that kind of, that changed. And then when I went into uh, the Navy, they were like, you know, I had a couple of choices. I could have either just gone in as a regular, you know, electronics technician or something like that. Or I could have gone to the nukes because they were like, you got a pretty high score on the ASVAB. (laughs) And they said, uh, so you can be a nuke. And I'm like, well, what's that? And they're like, well, they do blah, blah, blah. And they make more money than everybody else. So (laughs) I was like, all right. I'll do that. I'll do that. I mean, listen. They, listen, let's pay attention to the word uh-huh. nuke. Yeah, they can design a nuclear bomb. Wow. It's a bomb in this man's <laughs> mind. Hey, you know what I'm hey, saying? We, we saw the bomb. Okay, that that wonderful just that poetry. But I you mean, know what's ironic? spoken word. What's ironic is that you know what people fail to realize is that the scientists and mathematicians of the world they're the ones that are really good with music and mm. arts. I mean, they have yeah. that calculated mind. Yeah. And so they tend to be those that can, you know, they get into that. You know, you, t- you talk about somebody like Mozart or something like that. Mm-hmm. They had a very mathematical mind, the yeah. way they put things together. Mm. So it's, so the thing is, I tell this to anybody, all the kids out there, don't worry about anybody else who's calling you a nerd, a geek, or whatever, because, awesome. see, the geeks and the nerds make more money. That's in, true. In, in the long <laughs> that run. That is true. Number two, you know, these days, a lot of uh, a lot of people starting to change their perception of those who are intelligent. And if you try to fit in with those people who may not be on your level of intelligence, then you are lowering yourself from where you really should be. Right. And you I don't want to ever compromise that. Yeah, I know you gave your PIN number for your, your um, dial-in number for the uh, conference. How can anyone reach you or find your, your uh, poetry, your spoken word? So um, you can find me on... Instagram as Norm the Professor T H E Professor. You can also find me on um, Facebook, uh, Facebook dot com, and then s- s- uh, forward slash Norm the Professor. You can find me on um, Twitter, Norm the D A Professor. That was because they didn't have enough letters for that. <laughs> um, you can also find you can find me on the at Word Life Cafe on both Twitter and Instagram. Um, if you have any questions pertaining to my book 
or you want to know how to get on a conference call or whatever, you can write me at Among the Wolves Book hmm. at Yahoo.com. And where is the book available? Oh, it's on Amazon.com for download to iPad, <clears throat> iPhone, Android, uh, Nook, Kindle, all those different types of devices. And um, you can download it there. I got and a question real quick. What's, what's been the response like from your book, like from... You know, other pastors, you know, people that have been through the same situation. Which well, you know, at this time, I would tell you like this. There's been a few people who responded. I, I, I tend to think that some people, they don't know how to respond. Okay. They don't yeah. know how to react because it's hitting, it's hitting home for a lot of people. Right. And I believe that for some people, it might have hit them because they are the ones that's mm. doing it. Mm. And wow. then, you know, because I sent it to a lot of pastors and, you know, people who say they're yeah. ministers. I sent it to them and said, here, read this. And did you send it to your your old pastor, the one that you were? No, I didn't <laughs> send it to him. <laughs> he I, made I, I it. Could, I, could tell you, I could tell you a little story about that, but I don't think we have time yeah. for that one. But, yeah. That's going to be a part two. Wow, wow. Uh, we have a caller on the line. Preston, we have a caller. Well, real quick, we're getting ready to close out. Uh, today was a powerful show. I Amen. appreciate y'all, yes, brothers. Yes, yes, Definitely yes. for coming awesome, on. Awesome but show. I do want to say this. Before we close out, this is really important. Uh, there might be people that are still trapped into churches like that uh, yeah. that are in slavery. And we want to pray for them, lift yes. them up. Yes. And also the viewers that don't know the Lord. Uh, we definitely want to lift them up as well. So if you don't mm -hmm. mind, Mark Collins or uh, Norman the Professor, if y'all would. I pray sure. for them. Yes. <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit. Yes, God. We thank you for him being the one that leads us and guides us into all truth. He is the one that he walks beside us and holds us by the hand. Yes. And he shows us things to come. Father, we ask that the Holy Spirit would be released into the lives, into the hearts of those who are watching online, yes, those who are listening. Father, I pray now that you would touch them where they are. I thank you for your anointing me because I thank sense you, you right now moving in a strong, powerful mm. way, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord God, that your, your anointing is on the words that have been spoken tonight. And I pray, Lord God, that you would remove the chains, Lord God, that you would break yes, the chains in the lives of those that have been bound, yes, Lord God, Lord. to manipulation and control and and witches and wizards and mm. and warlocks in Ooh, the pulpit Lord. Yes, god. Lord god those that are trying to extort them they're committing extortion over the pulpit mm. and they're calling mm. and getting mm. your offerings and your wow. tithes and 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 special prophetic words lord god i thank you lord god that you expose them for who they are i pray that just as you open up my eyes and you showed me what it was that i was sitting under lord god as plain as day lord god i pray that you would reveal that truth now to those that are under the bondage that i was under lord god lord i pray now that you would cause them to not be caught up in bitterness and lord god to yes, miss lord. out on the things that you have for them but father i pray that they would be able to quickly forgive yes. and lord god move yes. on with their lives in a in the power of the holy spirit <laughs> and be able to share that with someone else lord god yes, that god. they were freed up from the same bondage lord god let it be done according to your will i thank you that those that are not saved that are listening today let them realize that you are the true and living yes, god lord. your name is yeshua and hamashiach lord. Yes, and lord god. god you are the true and living living God. Mm. And Lord God, I pray that they will open up their hearts to receive Christ now. Yes, Lord God, yes. realizing that he is Lord of all and that he was raised from the dead by Hallelujah. God. Lord God, let them be saved today. Today is the day of salvation. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus yes. we pray. Yes. yes. Amen. 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 Praise God. I have had a great time. One quick question. I always like to have fun with my guests when they're here. Okay, so um, Mark, Norman, if you could be a box of cereal, which one would it be and why? A box of cereal. That's a crazy question. I got an answer for that. What's your answer? I, I would be Frosted Mini Wheats. Uh, what? <laughs> Don't nobody like what? that? Yes. Wow. It's, it's healthy and yes, sweet at the same time. Okay. Your turn. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, mean, I like raisin bran, you know. So raisin I guess it'd be, I don't know. I guess it'd be, I don't know. I don't have a Mark, like, I ain't going to be no it. cereal. You're right. We had a great time. Mark Collins, Professor Norman Brown. Remember,
number to call into Vessel Radio, 276-318-3773. You can text us. Send us an email at at vesselradio at gmail.com. We're at, at Vessel Radio on Instagram and Twitter. We had a great time tonight. Yes. I had a wonderful time. Yeah, the Apostle, it. give it up. Thank you for joining Apostle. us, <laughs> sitting in with us. Tune in next week. We'll be here next Tuesday, 7 p.m. And continue to be a vessel. All right? Amen? Amen. Thank you so Shout much. Shout out to Cornerstone. Right. Cornerstone.